Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Days and welcome to today's Unseen video. We got so much to go through. We didn't do one yesterday because yesterday was UFC 300, a massive show. We ended up doing like an over seven hour live stream. And when I finished that, I looked at what we had and it was bits, but it didn't feel like it was urgent. Let's put it that way. We could have done an episode, but it wasn't urgent. So I thought I'd save that and then add whatever happened today. And actually, we've had some pretty big stuff today. So we're going to start with Nightbirds. And we're going to work our way through. Now, there's lots to talk about here. Let's start, shall we, with this from Morgan. So Morgan has been getting in touch with an Instagram account. This Instagram account posted out some Bray-related stuff all the way back in like 2021. And to be honest, Bray wasn't using the stuff on this Instagram account at that time. He would use it, but afterwards. And that's very interesting. White Rabbit was after 2021. But you can find elements of White Rabbit on that Instagram account. Bray also wore a shirt that had an image on it. That image is also on this Instagram account, and the Instagram account came first before White Rabbit. That makes it interesting. That means that we are looking at it, trying to figure out how this Instagram account really fits into things. What I would say is, I don't believe it's Bray, of course, because this Instagram account is responding to people that get in touch with it. So don't believe it to be Bray. I don't think it's Bo. I think Bo is very busy at the moment. I don't think he's sat there responding to people on Instagram, right? So I don't think it's Bo. I really think my honest opinion is I think this was an account that's being run by a person that's not connected. And I think that Bray may have been inspired by them, right? Or it could be just a coincidence, but it honestly, if you look at the account, it would be one hell of a coincidence, right? There is so much stuff on that account that feels like was then used as part of White Rabbit. The, it would feel like one hell of a coincidence. So I, I really think this is an account that maybe inspired Bray. We know that Bray was inspired lots of different ways, but mainly by horror films, right? And the documentary said that, um, was it like Goosebumps books that he used to read when he was young and uh, Stephen King novels? So inspiration came from everywhere. Um, and so I'm guessing that this was something that inspired him. So I don't think the person that runs this account has really got any connection, direct connection, to Bray, to WWE, or anything along those lines. There is a theory that it might be Kyle Scarborough because of a certain font that has been used. But to be honest, it, it, it only goes that deep for me. So respect to Morgan because he's asking it questions, getting responses, analyzing the responses. I think what I would say is if you are really interested in that side of things, follow Morgan, follow his journey, look at the responses that he's getting. But I think for me, I hold the Instagram, this Instagram account at arm's length because I'm still not sold that it is connected, if you will. I feel like there is a connection that they influence Bray. I'm not convinced it's anything more than that. So uh, but if you want to get more, then uh, Morgan is definitely the person you want to be following on X. Right, this, Harry, thank you. And I got tagged in this by loads of people. Thank you. So Elite Rockers said apparently WWE posted this on their official X account uh, in the middle of the night and then it got deleted within seconds. Now you can see the letters say you forgot us. I did count the question marks because I did wonder if the question marks might relate to the alphabet. So if there's eight question marks, what is the eighth letter of the alphabet? If there's 12 question marks, what is the 12th letter of the alphabet? So I counted them all up and uh, all I got was nonsense. So I don't think that that is anything, right? It might be that there is something that has to be decoded here, but uh, certainly I've not been able to find it yet. And no one else has either. All this really says is you forgot us at the moment. If there's a hidden meaning in there, it's not shown itself yet. 
So this came out, just a little bit of a buzz was created, obviously, as a result. Uh, just kind of backs up the glitch that we saw on SmackDown. So good, exciting, right? Another bit of exciting news, uh, J24, thank you. So East Coast Pro Wrestling announced that they have to cancel an appearance by Rowan due to new contractual obligations very exciting because people are thinking are those new obligations wwe are those new obligations wwe i hope they are i would love for him to be a part of this we have mentioned him before and it would make sense i mean you would have that link to the original wyatt family because the original Wyatt family was Bray, it was Luke Harper, it was Eric Rowan. And of course, other people would come in like Braun Strowman, and I hope he's part of this as well. But um, yeah, this could be WWE. It might not be. It might be that he's just got his dates colliding with another indie promotion. But there was a lot of excitement about this today. So I wanted to make you aware uh, and then we got this. So um, the, I don't want to spend too long on this because I don't want to really rant about it. I've already ranted online, right? Um, there's a lot of fake accounts at the moment, okay? There's a lot of people that are trying to... I don't know if they're just fans that are taking it too far and they're not really thinking about their actions. I, I'm going to look at it that way, right? I'm going to try and look at it from a positive perspective that they are just fans. But they're really not helping because this account, Uncle Howdy account on Twitter, it's a fake account, right? And uh, if we go up here, you can see here, look, uh, Hangem High uh, has found old deleted tweets from that account. This is from the Uncle Howdy account. Like, CM Punk won't make it tonight due to him having a meltdown backstage. That was from the 25th of November, I think uh, the same day as Survivor Series. Right. And then moments later, update, he now has a cupcake. So he's good. I mean, do you really think that this is going to be tweeted out by Uncle Howdy? Do you really think those are messages that Uncle Howdy is going to be sending out? And that those are just examples. You can easily find other messages on that Uncle Howdy account that really just come across as a fan just chatting away. Right. Just chatting away. And then occasionally they post some Uncle Howdy stuff. So for the longest time. A lot of us have been aware of this account and have known that it's not real, right? But now that these clues, these cryptic clues have started, this account has now started to post their own cryptic clues, and that's a problem because a lot of people believe this is Uncle Howdy. So this account is wasting people's time, right, which is bad enough, but they are also putting in these cryptic clues, which is taking people to places and it is providing new content that is not connected with the current story, right? At the moment, there's nothing malice in there, but I don't know how this snowballs. I don't know where this leads. I don't know, you know, we don't know the damage that is being caused because, as we said, they're wasting people's time. That's bad enough. But then, as well as that, every word that you say gets analysed, Right. Everything that you do is analyzed. Bray fans are looking for anything and everything. And I could understand people wanting to be a part of that. But if you're not a part of that, then don't get involved because you're only confusing things and you're only misleading people. And worse than that, I would say you're abusing the intellectual property of WWE. Right. You can't go around pretending to be someone else, right? I think the days of that on social media should now hopefully be long gone. And if they're not, they should be. Because thankfully, this person doesn't seem to be malicious. Thankfully, this person isn't doing anything bad at this stage. But, um, you know, putting up QR codes, getting people to scan them, that could take people anywhere. People could be getting led to, like, adult sites. They could be getting led to anything. They could be seeing any kind of images, right? And I think it's pretty scary, to be honest, that we've got people running around pretending to be Uncle Howdy that are putting up their own QR codes that, you know, could lead to anything unless they get called out. 
if they're not going to get called out, they're just going to keep doing it. So someone's got to put their foot down and say, nah, you've crossed the line now, right? You've crossed the line. And, um, you know, that's exactly what I did on Twitter. I'm not saying that I am that person. There's been other people that have spoken out. Hangam Hire's spoken out about it as well. But, um, yeah, I just got tagged so much, so much today in this kind of nonsense from this fake Uncle Howdy account. I still get tagged in the Dreadmare nonsense as well. It's just nonsense. It's just wasting your time. If you want to waste your time, that is absolutely fine. But please don't waste mine, right? I don't need to be tagged in it. I'm not interested in it. It's nonsense. So here was the QR codes. I'll play this because someone kindly recorded it. So they scanned it. They went to where it went and it went to this fake, awful looking Uncle Howdy site with uh, just some text on, some screenshots, some lightning in the background. Again, I don't think this person is uh, malicious, but this site could easily have viruses, malware, spyware. It could have loads of different things on. It could track you, trackers as you go around the uh, internet and gather in your data. Like this, if they wanted to, it could all look lovely, but they could put some pretty seedy, dirty stuff on this website. Viruses and whatnot that could really cause you some problems. I'm not saying that's what they've done. I'm just saying that if we're going to allow people to pretend to be Uncle Howdy, this is the kind of thing that it could lead to. So this just looks like a site that they've maybe created. There's got a few pictures and a bit of uh, stuff on. But again, look, we are coming. That was never said. That was never said. We are coming. That has not been said as part of this Nightbird campaign. So we are coming is not. That's not what has been said. So they are they are creating their own narrative. Now they're using their own language, which could really distort things if people believe that this is true. So that's what it was, right? QR codes. Um, here you can see uh, Hang 'em High just finding those old deleted tweets. Uh, they also got blocked. Uh, Hang 'em High said, look at this. I just got blocked from this uh, fake Howdy account. Stop sharing stuff from the Howdy account. It's fake, says Hang 'em High. So I went on to uh, Twitter because honestly, I reached my breaking point. Because I've had to deal with the dread mess stuff for weeks and weeks as it is. I don't need this now. So uh, WWE, Rob Fee. Rob Fee is WWE's uh, director of character development, right? Great guy. Seems like he's a proper great guy. Um, he's a very important guy as well. So I've tagged him in this and I said, look, can someone shut these fake Uncle Howdy accounts down? This piece of trash has now posted a QR code earlier, right, that led to a cheap-ass Howdy website. Who knows where it could lead in the future? Plus this fake binary code message. Again, who knows what that might decode as in the future, right? Just because there's nothing bad now doesn't mean it's not going to be something bad tomorrow. So can we stop this? Can we nip this in the buds? People think it's you. This has to be an abuse of your intellectual property. And it's the same with Dreadmare, who still refuses to put a disclaimer at the beginning of their videos. They do have one in their bio, but no one knows it's there. They play on that to continue deceiving people. I don't have the reach to inform everyone of the truth. And it's true, I don't. I wish I did, right? But um, these fake accounts and these fake cryptic clues, they will reach more people than I can reach. But you guys have the power to do something about it. Thank you in advance. So I, I feel like I've done my part. No one can turn around and say that I didn't do anything. I, I did my part. I've mentioned it on X. I'm mentioning it here. I'm trying to make people aware, right? And so if bad stuff comes of this, my hands are clean. That's all I know. If this goes south or sour, right, my hands are clean. So I've done my part. It's, um, it's, it's over to them. They're the ones that should be making it clear they are not these people. Yeah. Shouldn't be down to others to have to do that. So, um, 
So that was my rant. Uh, but Braun Strowman had a rant as well. Look, he said, am I the only one that thinks it should be harder for people to get a damn driver's license, especially in Florida? No one knows how to drive. End rant. Uh, and then WrestleBuzz uh, just tweeted out this fun looking image that's been uh, created of a night bird uh, maybe an owl and um kind of plays on the white rabbit uh, image before so uh, there we go hashtag night birds fun little image so that was night bird let's go into the perv folder here look you can see look at this natty says oof so uh, ajk said first tegan <laughs> And then Roxanne. I don't know if her eyes are closed, actually. She's a perv. Not so sure about her. She might not be a perv. I don't know. Perhaps she's looking at this fabric thinking that's nice. Don't know. But uh, either way, look, Nat is like, oh. Uh, John said, what folder does this go in? Well, it goes in the perv folder, John, and you'll be pleased to know that you're in it as well now. Um, and also, can I just take this opportunity to say, I, I don't need you to send me just pictures of wrestlers in bikinis looking lovely, right? I, I, that's not what the perv folder's for, right? Uh, I'm trying to put stuff into this perv folder that's got a bit more of a purpose than that, right? So you might remember we included like Dakota in a bikini, but she was sat by a pool playing with her dog, chucking a dog toy in, and the dog was like going in after the water and it splashed her. Like that's kind of a bit fun, but a bit pervy at the same time. Like there was more to it than just here's a shot, you know, of someone looking lovely. So the perv folder does have more of a purpose than just us being pervs, right? I think in a way it's just me trying to find a way of feeling better about myself, yeah? Because I know this is pretty seedy, so we're going to move on. So that was the perv folder. <clears throat> Here is a UFC. Amazing. As we said, this was why we didn't get... Um, uh, one done yesterday, an unseen video done yesterday. So uh, Zoe said insane finish uh, to the end of this uh, Holloway fight. Kathy Kelly said, Max really said it's over when I say it's over. So uh, Natty as well, look, uh, blessed is a monster. So this, this was amazing. Here you can see 10 seconds left. Holloway pointing to the center of the octagon. He's basically saying, you and me... 10 seconds, let's throw down, let's go. And that is exactly what they do. They both stand in the center. Time is ticking away. Time is counting down. There's four seconds left. They've been fighting for 25 minutes, right? And they're, they're going at it. The crowd are on their feet. It's absolutely amazing. Look at this. Look at this. This shot, two seconds on the clock. Boom! Look at that arm. Boom! Two seconds left. Dead, mate. Dead with one second remaining. People are saying it's the best knockout in UFC history. It was so exciting. Look at this. Cedric Alexander said, so Bless gets 300K, right? Because performance of the night got 300,000. He actually got 600,000. He got $300,000 for performance of the night. And then this one fight of the night as well. So I think they both got 300,000 for that. So uh, uh, this guy over here, Holloway, the one that's not dead, he walked away with 600,000 in bonuses. Amazing. So I just wanted to show you some of the superstars reacting to that. Right, uh, Esmeralda, shout out to you, my friends. Uh, a lot of people tagged me in this. Big E said, uh, hey, all, two year neck scans are in. Things are unchanged. My C1 has healed, right, but has not formed new bone. I'm not medically cleared, and truthfully, I may never be medically cleared, but I am blessed to be free of pain immensely happy and otherwise healthy life is good and he also said tell al thank you uh, he said to the new day i said to the boys i've been out for two years if you want to find a new partner i understand uh, they very quickly shut that down 
And look at this. So Big E just posted this on Instagram. My neck is broken, but my heart is whole. So I don't know if there's more to that. No, there isn't. But uh, look at that. Another post here. Big E has revealed he is in a relationship with Mia Yim's sister, Chris Yim. So that, that is Mi Chin's sister. And uh, she is in a relationship with Big E. How awesome is that? Big E and uh, Mi Chin's sister in a relationship. And they've posted these really fun pictures. So uh, love that. So it's sad. Of course it's sad. But uh, he does seem to be in a good place. So that's that's good. Right. Carrion uh, just said, put this out. He was saying time. The truth is there's never enough. We can't rewind life, perhaps for the best. It, focus, it focuses us to be present and to prepare for the future. Right. And then he just kind of carries on, but shows us a montage, a highlight package of what his time in NXT was like before. He finds himself there again now, which is quite a surprise, to be honest. He's down there with the AOP, so probably not a good sign that they don't have anything for them after WrestleMania. But um, I don't know, as well as that, they are trying to strengthen the ratings of NXT. So sending down the Authors of Pain and Karrion Cross and Scarlet, you'd think that might just, you know strengthen things a little bit bring some much needed experience to the roster because that roster is probably about to lose quite a bit of experience in all fairness we are expecting them to lose some people in the draft so i uh, thought that was uh interesting it's good if you never got to see carrion in nxt before and talking of the draft, Brony, shout out to you. Fightful selectors learned that Ilya Dragunov and Carmelo Hayes are said to be a lock for either Raw or SmackDown. So no surprise there. We've seen Carmelo on the main roster before. I think we were expecting him to come up. And Ilya was announced as being eligible for the draft. It would be strange to announce that and then not draft him. So, uh, yeah, there are a few other names. If you want to just skip forward using the timestamps. Do that now, right? But I can tell you, and I am giving people a chance to pause or skip forwards, right? But I can tell you that the Tony D'Angelo family, Baron Corbin, and Roxanne Perez are names that have been mentioned as potential call-ups, but not guaranteed. Right, um, this has been announced. Idris Anofe and Malik Blade against the AOP on Tuesday. Don't quite know what that response is from Anofe. He's just sort of looking, isn't he, really? Uh, he doesn't seem happy. He doesn't seem sad. He just seems to be aware. So there we go. That's Tuesday. Thea Hale has responded to this match. It's going to be her against Tatum Paxley. And uh, she says, creep. We know that Tatum turned on Lyra Valkyria last week. Ilya Dragunov said, tell them all. Whoever comes, whoever it is, I'll break them. I'll break them all. So Dragunov is ready. And uh, here as well, look, Dominic said, I wasn't supposed to have the North American title for as long as what I did. So he didn't really go into detail. He just said he was really proud of the work that he did in NXT. I, I think he was probably meant to drop it to Wesley, but then Wesley got injured. So I don't know if that extended his run a little bit, but um, apparently he wasn't meant to have it as long as what he did. Not only that, I think on Tuesday we've got Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams in a steel cage match. So uh, we've got that on Tuesday as well. Right, let's go to Cody. Uh, here, look, you can see Cody doing Cody things. So this is from a house show. And uh, here, look, you can see him in the ring and he gifts a weight belt to the kids, gives them a hug and everything. Just Cody doing Cody things. Uh, here as well, Kid gets uh, Raw tickets and he's really pleased at it. And uh, he'll be going to Raw, his hero's Cody. Uh, Mum says, uh, we'd love to meet you, Cody. Cody said, I think we can arrange that. Someone from WWE will reach out. Can't wait to meet you. Happy birthday. Very cool, isn't it? Uh, here as well, look, this person is ready for uh, London. Uh, the jacket looks great. Last time in the UK, we had such good cosplay and signs 
Also, my friends at Fanatics and WWE Shop have got some exclusive UK, Ireland and France merch ready to go. We're working on Italy at the moment, so just something to be aware of. But this is very good, isn't it? This was all made and everything. It reminds me, actually, I might have. Have I got it lined up? I do. Look at this. So this is from Kendra Corbett. Uh, and this is her making a jacket for her son, I believe. Uh, kind of putting it together, measuring it and everything. It's very, very impressive. I mean, I, I didn't realize, I mean, I should have, but the amount of work that goes in. I don't know, you just don't really think about it. I mean, I'm not someone that makes clothes. So, yeah, look at this, measuring uh, measuring up the, the, the young Cody and uh, getting the fit right. And then, uh, obviously, uh, putting in the work with the boots. Look at that. Look at that. Um, so good. So impressive. So, And that's it finished. Look, with the weight belt and everything. That's the back. So very impressive. Very, very good. The work that the fans are putting in is, uh, as I said, just so incredible. I bet Cody just can't believe some of the stuff he's seeing. Right, let's go to community, shall we? Here we go, look. Got a new app on my phone. I made a younger you and an older you. I love older me. Yeah, that is not younger me, by the way. I have been younger, and I do remember what I looked like, and I didn't look like that. I was more attractive. But older me! Oh, I love old... That looks like, looks like a guy called uh, Brian Sid... Goes down the pub, as a pint. He'll have a chat with the barmaids. He won't get anywhere, but he'll have a go. And then uh, on his way back on a Friday, he'll have some fish and chips, you know? And it's like, oh, how's it going, Brian? Yeah, I'm doing good. Do you want me to slip a sausage in for you? Yeah, slip a sausage in. So he'll have a sausage with his fish and chips. Goes off home, you know, minds his own business, has a pint down. Oh, I can't wait to be this guy. I'm so excited I get to be him. I get to be him. Oh, he's such a player. I'm so happy. There was a picture up here. Look, look at this. Look at this. So uh, there he is. Look, I'm going to be busy in the old folks' home. That is me with the girls. I was a bit worried about this picture. And then I realized that this is some ornament that's at the front, right? But uh, there was a brief moment where I thought this would not be able to get shown. But uh, there's me and the ladies. Let's go, man. Me, me later on in life is going to be uh, it's going to be a legend in the old folks' homes. A legend. Uh, we got this as well. Alex said, "I know it's AI and it's controversial, but I wanted to create this." Listen, AI is not controversial for me. If I, I don't mind people taking the mick out of me, I don't mind as long as it comes from a good place, right? Obviously, if there's people that hate me and hate the channel and hate this community and they're going to use AI to kind of attack us, that's a very different conversation. But um, if someone is, you know, a part of the community, they want to have a laugh, they want to create something that they think the community will enjoy. Go for it, man. I, I, as I said, go for it. I'm, I'm here for this stuff. But look at this is sick. And I think we're going to be allowed to play this because I don't think it's copyrighted. And I'm sure Alex wouldn't mind. Um, it's been created to be heard. So let's give it a go, shall we? Check this out. I love the blue as well. I've got to say that. I saw the blue hat and the blue jacket, like the tinge of blue. I was like, that suits me. That suits me. I might need to start getting blue rather than black don't know that's a whole separate thing here we go the weekend starts just right cold beers and snacks on site smackdown's gone wild and we are gonna watch, watch along with wrestling days tonight tune into the live stream ah. we're about to start welcome to the show we're out of control wrestling's about to score and we are in a daze it's not a phase Friday Smackdown Never say never go Welcome to Wrestling Days It's good and it, welcome man. to a very special Friday night Smackdown 
so good. Isn't it scary how amazing AI voices are? Isn't it scary? I mean, I, 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 we've been talking a lot about them because of like Dreadmare and everything, right? But when you hear that, that's not an actual band. That's a computer that's generated all of that. Oh, man, it's scary, isn't it? <laughs> scary. So, uh, uh, Alex, really appreciate it, buds. I thought that was absolutely brilliant, and now I'm absolutely shattered. Right, let's go down, shall we? This is the WrestleMania stuff. So, this is... I'm going to have to get my breath back now. That's the most cardio I've done, like, this year. Um, so, this is Ava with The Rock, right? Backstage at WrestleMania. This is really cool because we don't really get to see these two uh, together. So, love that image. Uh, this is good as well. This is the moment that Cody got to open that present, the watch that Dusty pawned. I don't think it's the exact same one. But uh, he's going to cry, isn't he? He's going to cry. He's going to cry. <laughs> he probably should, in all fairness. I'd cry. If someone gave me a Rolex, I'd cry. Um, oh, yeah, this is really interesting. Let's uh, whoosh this in, shall we? So I think this was Instagram. Look at this. Look how long it takes Seth to get in the ring. Look at him trying to get into the ring and use that chair. I did wonder why the shield music played as long as what it did. But it's because, like, he really is struggling. Look at him. I mean, he's obviously feeling the effects of the night before. He's feeling the effects of his match earlier. I think there could be a bit of an injury that's been suffered there. Don't know how bad it is, but we saw him unable to actually... Uh, we saw him unable to actually get up at the end of this main event. Uh, he had to be helped by Jey Uso and he kind of like hobbled and you could see him hobbling past the ramp and everything. So definitely does seem like some damage was done to Seth over the weekend. This is in backstage. It's Bryn again. So Seth and Triple H embracing at some point during WrestleMania uh, 40. Uh, it's a lovely image. That's probably him finding out that he's going to lose the main event of night one. He's going to lose his title at the start of day two. And then he's also going to just get punched in the face and hit in the back with a chair um, in the main event of night two as well. And actually nothing good's going to go his way. That's him finding out right there. <laughs> right, I like this. So uh, not sure Michaels said, I had this hat made, but I debated about wearing it until everyone I asked that day told me it definitely completed the HBK look. Then I also realized if I wear it, Mattel has to give me the hat accessory with my action figure. And that was the deciding factor so he came out wearing this hat but he wasn't sure about it but as soon as he thought well if i wear it they'll have to make it and put it with my figure then he decided to wear it it's clever isn't it harry van vliet shout out to you right wrestling world cc this was five hours ago rhea ripley said jason jordan is the best for calming her down from a panic attack that she suffered before her wrestlemania match with becky lynch so we heard she had suffered a panic attack i don't know if this is an actual picture of the moment but uh, apparently jason jordan playing a big part in calming her down uh, wrestling world cc again um brandy was holding her breath like she was underwater she explains what it was like to watch those closing moments of cody finishing his story there she is in gorilla watching on and then of course she would race down to the ring uh, and embrace cody very very cool and we are a bit pushed for time so um I i'm not going to play much of this but Have, hopefully you don't get injured so no injuries here to report uh, my body feels great had a great week of work working out recovering uh i did a 12-week training camp uh to prepare for wrestlemania i wanted to make sure that i felt like my size was good i weighed in at about 284 pounds when it was bell time at wrestlemania last week training was on point and one set up in georgia and I wanted to make sure again that my conditioning was on point. The boss returns, he's coming back for you. I'll make you bleed again, boy. <laughs> um, congratulations, Cody Rhodes. Congratulations to my cousin Roman Reigns on an incredible uh, three and a half year run, maybe even four years. Uh, just incredible and iconic and historic. I'm very, very proud of you, Uso. 
And also congratulations to who I feel is a real MVP of the entire WrestleMania weekend, Seth Rollins, Seth freaking Rollins. Um, what an honor it was to share the ring with you three. What an honor it was for us to break records. And now my sights are set on the next WrestleMania. That's interesting, isn't it? Um, I, I don't know if it's the next WrestleMania that he's going to be coming back to, but he basically thanked the fans. He said, we shattered every record. He said he wanted to build up the biggest WrestleMania ever. He wanted some, one of the biggest builds ever. Uh, he said he gets asked about how he's feeling a week on from WrestleMania. He said, banged up. That's when he talks about, like, you know, putting the work in the 12-week re camp, having three rings set up in different locations, having wrestlers help him. He doesn't name them, but... But we know that it was Gallus, Bobby Roode, Michael P.S. Hayes playing a big part. Uh, he was 284 pounds, which is interesting info. He said he felt quick and sharp. Uh, he said that uh, he congratulates Cody. He, um, this was really Dwayne, not the final boss that was talking. It was Dwayne. But he congratulates uh, Cody. You heard that bit where he said, I'm going to come back and make you bleed, boy. So there was a little bit of final boss that was in there. Uh, he congratulates Roman. I love the congratulations to Seth. I thought that was awesome. Uh, calls him the MVP of this year's WrestleMania. Um and yeah, you know, he's, he's just really positive. Um, he's quite excited for the future and everything. So uh, that that was uh, the words of the final boss earlier today. Uh, WrestlePlug just putting it up uh, a couple of hours ago over on X. So that was that. Let's go down here. This is WWE. A few bits in here by the looks of it. So WWE are pulling back from much of the augmented reality that you see. They're not going to do that as much. They'll just save it for like premium live events, which I think is going to be better, to be honest. Um, I think they've got some good ones. I don't mind the Becky one and the Judgment Day. I'm not crazy about the giant Roman, but uh, I think some of it's all right. Uh, Edward, shout out to you. Yes, Sid Scala is the person that's been released. He used to work for NXT UK. He was the GM. Then they said they were going to bring in NXT Europe, but they didn't, haven't yet. And now they've released Sid Scala. So he was kind of under contract in the background. We weren't seeing him. Um, the plan was to bring him back when NXT Europe started, but now he's been released. So that's probably not a great sign for NXT Europe at the moment, is it? But it is worth mentioning, I think we'll mention it later, that uh, Rossi is expected to announce his new promotion very, very soon. And it is expected that that will be connected with WWE. So I wonder if they're currently turning their attention to Japan, getting that done, and then they'll worry about Europe afterwards. Right, uh, this image here, look, for my phenomenal figures said this was posted by Solo. Just ask him, what does it mean? I think if you remember, Solo hugged Jimmy before Jimmy was kicked out of the bloodline. And I think this is an image of Solo hugging Roman. And I'm taking this as a clue that Roman is out of the bloodline. I'm taking this as another clue that Roman is not who Solo and Tamatonga is acknowledging at the moment. This is no longer their tribal chief. We don't know if the new tribal chief is Solo. It tr It's true. Roman said the next in line was Solo. That is true. But uh, that was also before The Rock was around. The Rock is back now. And uh, I'm wondering if The Rock is now the tribal chief, the person that Solo is acknowledging at the moment. Eventually, I think Solo will go on to be a tribal chief, right? That seems to be the plan for him. I just don't know if that's the case now. So we don't know if it's Solo. We don't know if it's The Rock. It could even turn out to be Jacob Fatu. But uh, this is another clue that um, I don't think Solo is acknowledging Roman Reigns anymore. That's how I decoded it. Right, Mitchell, shout out to you, Courtaholic, saying that Shawn Michaels has said that AJ Styles is the person that he wants to face at WrestleMania if, if, it's a big if, he was to come out of retirement. I don't think he will come out of retirement, but if he did come out of retirement, that's the person that he would want to face. 
Right, uh, Watson, thank you. This is a fun fact that Drew McIntyre actually stopped Damian Priest from cashing in on quite a few occasions, and that then went to bite him in the backside. So here, look, we can see footage here of just different times that Drew has like hurled that briefcase. Remember that moment where he chucked the briefcase away so that Damien couldn't cash in? And then there was this moment where he tried to cash in and he ended up getting uh, claymored. So uh, he ended up eating a claymore here. He was trying to cash in. There's Drew. And you know, he comes along. Boom, big claymore. That meant that he couldn't cash in at Raw. Right, So there was a few occasions where Drew stopped Damien from cashing in and then ultimately it would bite Drew in the backsides where Damien would cash in when Drew was champion. So love that from uh, Push LA Knight. Think that was a really good observation. Right, uh, Sue Aitchinson, uh, you might remember she got the Warrior Awards uh, for her charity work, and she was loved by loads of people. She apparently was one of the people that was let go recently as part of that kind of talent relations restructure. So it uh, looks like she was actually let go. And worth just mentioning, no Warrior Award at this year's Hall of Fame ceremony. So don't know if that award is now retired, but it uh, looks like the Warrior Award is maybe done. That wasn't around this year. Uh, and neither is Sue. Uh, she looks like she was one of those uh, victims of that restructure. Uh, Pete Dunn has been producing all of the WWE speed matches. That's interesting. That's from Fightful Select. So, Deris fan, thank you. Coach Code, thank you. Kenny, for your thoughts, said, fun fact, AJ Styles has faced Dusty Rhodes, but has never had a one-on-one -on -one with Cody. And it feels like that could be where we're heading for Backlash. LA Knight put out a little promo. I won't play it because we are a bit pushed for time. But uh, he put a promo out uh, just saying that uh, couldn't get enough at Mania. Uh, so he's looking forward to the rematch, basically. So just a promo where he's all kind of fired up. It's only about 20 odd seconds long. Right, Liv Morgan said she can't wait to find out what Rhea Ripley has got to say in response to that attack from last week. Ricochet said, why would you not show up to Raw? Like, come and see the highlight of the night. Montreal, are you like that? Now, I thought when he put this out, that meant that ticket sales were really slow. But I've looked at ticket sales. They're only 700 away from selling out. And then it dawned on me, they've sold out for like the past 15 shows. So they probably want that to continue. So I think that it's not a problem. It's not a panic. I think that there's a few superstars just trying to help this show sell out, make sure that this is another show that does sell out, right? So I think that's why he said that. Right, also we've got Sammy taking on Chad Intercontinental Championship match. Uh, that should be a lot of fun. Uh, WWE Draft News is on select, says uh, Fightful. I think we've uh, touched on that already. Uh, Jay Uso is going to be taking on Finn Balor on Raw. Sheamus is going to be back on Raw. Andrade is taking on Dominic Mysterio. And we've got Caden Carter and Katana Chance taking on Piper Niven and Chelsea Green. So we've got that match coming up. And this was Rhea's response to uh, the fact that she's going to be uh, talking about that attack. She just posted this, look. Do you know what? This is really good because we don't really see Rhea in this position where she's been attacked and she's going to talk about it. So, you know, Rhea is pretty angry at the best of times. She's going to be extra angry here. So it should make for a very good segment. So looking forward to that. And also Cody is going to be on the show. Don't know quite what he's going to be saying, but he will be on the show. Uh, right, let's go down here. This is the fun folder. Let's see what we've got. Here's Triple H, picture of Triple H at WrestleMania. He's uh, going through the rehearsals for Rhea Ripley's motionless in white entrance. That's pretty fun. This was uh, The Rock Look. He was uh, just helping launch Moana 2. And uh, Corey said, so this is what the final boss is doing whilst giving orders to Solo. Uh, Tristan, shout out to you. Look, here's The Rock having a little dance, dancing away as he's now off 
promoting Moana to. What a life he's got last week is uh, WrestleMania. Now is promoting Moana too. What a what a life. Here's another one of these uh, videos. Here's Roman Reigns. Uh, Ronnie, thank you. Roman reaction memes. So this is Roman making his return as a baby face to align with the Usos. So here's uh, Roman dancing away. This clip has gone viral. And uh, obviously, they're using AI to just uh, replace the person dancing away. We've seen lots of different people in that position. Uh, we want Cody with this clip here. So this was during uh, Power Slap. Cody's music plays... And you can see Damien and Braun doing the whoa, reacting to it. So, uh, whoa, there they are, look, reacting in the background, having a good time. So, Captain Howdy, thank you. Sadly, we're not going to have time to play this clip, but uh, uh, Godly put up this uh, video clip. I think it's from like a ride along. It's Roman and Seth trying to cut promos on each other, but they're trying to do it about compliments. They're trying to say, you look really nice today, but in like a wrestling aggressive style. So they're going back and forth doing that. It's a fun clip. Goes for about a minute and a half. And uh, I would recommend that you uh, search that out as they compliment each other in a WWE style. So uh, John, shout out to you. You said it's the first time I've seen this. It had me in stitches. WWE Ethan here, look, with a funny picture of Dusty, uh, Dusty, uh, Stardust, uh, Cody with uh, Brandy. So there we go. These two on a roller coaster. I don't know where they are, but these two on a roller coaster. Uh, here, I love this. It's Bryn again said, I always knew that Tony was a fan. So Amy said, it's too late to win them back, Tony. Nice try, though. So there's Tony Khan with his CM Punk shirt, CM Punk jacket, Cody Rhodes sign. It's too late to win them back. Yeah, look at this as well. So Meechin just letting us know that WWE superstars are going to be on Celebrity Family Feud. Looks like Zelina... Uh, Meechin, uh, Sonia Deville, Jade Cargill, Bianca Belair, Street Profits, Bobby Lashley, Austin Theory, and LA Knight. Austin Theory has got the tag belt, so that means this was recorded after WrestleMania. So I think this was recorded literally the past few days. So uh, that coming up very soon. We've got this uh, video clip as well. So this is um, a bit of a miscommunication. You can see here, look, comes off the ropes and they just sort of like collide into each other. Seth's like, forget this, goes over, tags in Cody, goes and sits on the step and has a bit of a strop. He's like, nah, forget this. So now Cody has to go in and deal with it. So uh, there we go. Uh, and, and I think it was as a result of that little miscommunicate. He's not really upset. He's just, it's a house show. It's a live event. They're just having some fun. Here's another one. This time, Cody has responded. So uh, ISO Wrestling said, one week of Cody being champion and bloodline stands are moaning that Cody's going to have a long reign. Life is good. Cody laughs and he said, the build to mania was such an intense ride and the bloodline stands challenged me. I met that challenge. So in my own way, I've got love for them. So there's Cody now dancing away in this uh, viral clip. Uh, Dijax responded to this from WWE. He said, it's not retribution this time. Trust me, we did enough useless hacking of WWE to last a lifetime. So this is not retribution, right? So I uh, love that. E-Specs, shout out to you. Backstage picture, look, Dominic Mysterio says, Logan, how do you feel about black and purple? So uh, I don't know, could he be joining Judgment Day? And I love this next response. This is amazing. Boom. Look at that. <laughs> Rhea said, back the up, Logan. I'm so serious. There is Logan Paul in the Judgment Day. Ah, oh, mate. If it weren't for the Rowan news, which I think might be bigger, this would be the thumbnail. I just think this is hilarious. 
Honestly, it's so, so... I can't move on. We're so pushed for time, but I, I want this to marinate. I want this to really make an impact on your lives. Is that not just the best? Is that not just the best? He should release a goth flavor prime, and this should be on the bottle. <laughs> so there we go. This is the one he put out. No, no, mates. Hot topic. Yeah. So there we go. And then we got this one as well. Look at this. Another one. So this is Drew McIntyre after watching the CM Punk footage. So here's Drew making his way out, dancing away. I don't think he's got much to dance about at the moment, to be honest. Not after being cashed in on. Technically, it is another title reign for him, though. So, you know, he does become, what, a two-time, three-time champion now. So technically, it is another reign. But I don't think he's got too much to celebrate. So there we go. And I think that just leaves uh, the fun folder, doesn't it? We did that folder. We've done that folder. We've done Nightbirds. I think it's just the other folder. And we've still got 10 minutes to go. Let's go. So here look some lovely pictures of Cody and uh, Cody's daughter with the championship belts. Very, very cool. So Kian, shout out to you. Anthony, shout out to you. Fade said, look, a rare photo of Jimmy, Jay, Roman, Solo, Rikishi, and Jeremiah Fatu. Now, Jeremiah, he actually sat on Santa's lap during an old episode of Raw from, I want to say, like 1997. People thought it was one of the Usos, but it was actually Jeremiah. So I believe these are the Usos. That looks like uh, Roman, of course. That's Rikishi. That would mean that this is Solo Scott. I believe that's Solo. That looks to me like Jeremiah, just judging by that moment from Raw in 97. So I believe that's Jeremiah. And I believe that's young Solo Scott. Look, he's got an S on his head, so he must be. <laughs> uh, right, Fade said, Roman has officially changed his bio. No longer does he say Undisputed Champ. He says the Tribal Chief, the head of the table, nine-time WrestleMania main eventer. Amazing. Nine times. So, uh, Chris, thank you. Here's Paul Ellerin. He's got Rocco the doll in a cage. If you don't know who Rocco is, then, you know, God bless you. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know why we tried to do this, but Rocco was a puppet that um, we tried to introduce as part of, like, the Legion of Doom gimmick. I think they wanted the Legion of Doom to be a bit more relatable and approachable and maybe uh, the kids to have something to connect with. So that's why we had this puppet. We had Rocco. Didn't make any sense. It absolutely bombed. We don't need Rocco back, right? We don't need Rocco back. But uh, there he is, look, in his little Legion of Doom gear. He's in a cage. Is this going to tease that he's going to bring him back? Maybe people would pop because of the nostalgia now. Maybe if he brought him back, people would be like, oh, this is cool. It, it wasn't cool. So I don't know. But uh, there we go. Uh, Fantasy Booker Podcast. Thank you. And hey, this was it. Look, Rossi Agawa is holding a press conference tomorrow. I actually don't know if that was today or not. I mean, it was 20 hours ago. So does that mean now? Does that mean now? He's holding a press conference tomorrow on the Wrestle Universe channel. It's about his new promotion where he will present details. Hang on, it says the 15th. Well, it's the 15th technically now. So I don't know. I reckon probably hours, hours away. I would, I would delay putting this up till we find out, but... Um, I don't know what he's going to say. I, he might not actually say anything about WWE. So what I will say is, obviously, if there's any big news, we'll do a separate video. If not, we'll just include it in tomorrow's Unseen. But be aware, Summit Big could be on the way. He might be uh, uh, about to announce. I don't know that it'll be called NXT Japan. It might just be like, you know, Moondom, right? I don't know, Venusdom. We had stardom. So now it might be something different, right? Jupiterdom. But <laughs> Jupiterdom, right? I hope he calls it Jupiterdom. Jupiterdom! Oh, if he doesn't call it, that is Mr. Trick. Um, so it might be called something like that, but it might just be that WWE have a working relationship with them, and, and that's, that's kind of what it is, you know? 
Coach Co, uh, thank you. Chelsea Green has got her apology from Fairmont Hotel. So there we go. They did contact her. They have apologized. So she'll be over the moon with that. Uh, so we did Nightbird. We did WWE. We did Firm. We did WrestleMania. We did Community. We did Cody. We did NXT. I think we've done it all. We have done it all, haven't we? I don't want to make. I want to make sure we've got everything. And we have. So that's it. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this episode. As I said, that was two days worth. So if I had just done the stuff from Saturday, then uh, I think we would have ended up with maybe two kind of half an hour episodes, which would have been fine. But I think it was better to just oh, get it all into one and, you know, have it uh, have it as a proper episode. So thanks so much for joining us. I hope you uh, uh, enjoyed this uh, episodes and i will see you for the raw watch along uh obviously that will be our final watch along for a little bit as i am off to florida if you've got suggestions of places to get like action figures or wrestling merch i know about walmart and target and hogan's beat shop but i don't know uh, people have mentioned costco they've mentioned maybe uh tj max or i don't know I don't know. GameStop, do they do anything? Are there any good flea markets that I need to go to? If there's anyone that lives in the Florida area, let me know. And yes, Mitchell, I know you do. I'm looking at you. I've put a post up on the channel where I want, you know, what do I need to try as well? Like, I've never had moon pies. I've never had a corn dog. I'd be very interested in trying those things, maybe putting up some reaction videos, fun little content. I'm looking for fun, different content for the channel um, because obviously we do unseens, we do opinion videos, we do live streams, but we used to do loads of toy hunts. There will be toy hunts. I am going. Really, that's my primary purpose for going. So there will be toy hunts, but what else do I need to do whilst I'm there? Awesome. Thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate the support. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.